whole tip world welcome back to the chosen few channel i'm your host matthew daniels the writer author scribe and bookworm but i'm not just a bookworm world <clears throat> i'm the real bookworm make sure you get it right and as always may your name live on forever and may your memory your memory family never die today y'all see the title man we're going to be going into the book, The History of the Kings of Britain by Joffrey of Monmouth. Monmouth, rather. Now, this guy lived from 1095 to 1155 CE, meaning he lived around 900 years ago. And why I want to go to this book is with the death of um who they're calling queen elizabeth the second um um the minor the monarchy in britain is a hot topic right now so since the monarchy in britain is a hot topic right now i wanted to address the mythological origins of kingship the mythological origins of monarchy in britain <clears throat> um 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 just to add to that discussion and to do that i'm going to bring a uh a historian of the kings of britain of uh, um someone from that area himself from 900 years ago because you know i'm the real bookworm not just a bookworm world i'm the real bookworm make sure you get it right so i'm always gonna go to some ancient records just to share some information with y'all so um the first thing that i want to let you guys know that according to the mythological origins of the monarchy in britain they claim that the the first king the first real ruler of britain was a man named brutus okay now brutus was a descendant of a man named aeneas now this guy aeneas is purported to have been a warrior hero who was half human half god a warrior human who fought in the trojan war Yes, the same Trojan War of, of Homer, the Odyssey and the Iliad, right? The, the, the same Trojan War. And after this Trojan War, um, Aeneas ended up having descendants, and one of his descendants was Brutus. Brutus becomes the first king of uh, Britain. Let's go into um, the history of the kings of Britain by Geoffrey Mon Monmouth and see how he describes the mythological origins of the monarchy. And <clears throat> um, um, quite possibly when he was writing this 900 years ago, he, it appears he was writing this as if it was facts, right, to him 900 years ago. So let's just look into the world of, of the ancient writer. That's what I like you guys to do. He says, lastly, Britain is inhabited by five races of people, the Norman French, the Britons, the Saxons, the Picts, and the Scots. Of these, the Britons once occupied the land from sea to sea before the others came. Now, at this point, he's been telling the history of Britain. And so at this point, he's telling you that it's already inhabit inhabited. Um, the um, Britain, the, that island is already inhabited by multiple groups of people. He goes on to say, after the Trojan War, Aeneas fled from the ruined city with his son Ascanius and came by boat to Italy. He was honored, received there by King Latinus, but Turnus, king of the Rituli, became jealous of him and attacked him. In the battle between them, Aeneas was victorious. Turnus was killed, and Aeneas seized both the kingdom of Italy and the person of Lavinia, who was the daughter of Latinus. So you see, he's beginning it with what I told you. But why would somebody in Britain be tying themselves to Greek mythology, the Greek mythology of Homer? Why? Because the Greek mythology of Homer had trickled down to the Romans, right? To the Romans. And in the time of the Roman Empire, they colonized the Britons. And when they colonized the Britons, they introduced them to Roman culture and they learned this story from the Romans and they applied it to their own mythological origins in Britain because the Romans themselves, they say that the founders of Rome are the brothers Remus and Romulus who are in fact in some of the mythology of Rome descended from Aeneas as well. 
right? So the, the Romans colonized the people on Britain. They got Roman culture from the Romans. They got these Greek stories and they applied it to their own mythological <clears throat> stories as well. That's why they're talking about the Trojan War. He goes on to say, when Aeneas last day came as Canaeus was elected king. So after Aeneas died, the dude who fought in the Trojan War, his son became king, right? He founded the town of Alba on the bank of the Tiber and became the father of a son called Silvius. This Silvius was involved in a secret love affair with a certain niece of Lavinius. He married her and made her pregnant. When this came, <clears throat> excuse me, to the knowledge of his father Ascanius, the latter ordered his soothsayers to discover the sex of the child which the girl had conceived. As soon as they had made sure of the truth of the matter, the soothsayers said that she would give birth to a boy who would cause the death of both his father and his mother, and that after he had wandered in exile through many lands, this boy would eventually rise to the highest honor. So now you see a descendant of this warrior in the Trojan War, a prophecy being made about his birth from soothsayers. This is going to be Brutus, the first king of Britain. He goes on to say the soothsayers were not wrong in their forecast. When the day came for her to have her child, the mother bore a son and died in childbirth. The boy was handed over to the midwife and was given the name Brutus. And so, you know, <clears throat> later on, he fulfilled the prophecies and he was cast off into exile. And so when you really get down to it, you have to ask yourself um, 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 something. Was Brutus actually a real person? Obviously, now they know that, that he is mythological. But to Joffrey a Mon month, he was actually trying to tell the history of the kings of Britain. And uh, honestly, um, um, a lot of nations tied themselves in to have man, have God type entities that, that, that founded their nation. So it's no surprise with that there. And really it's no surprise that, um, the, the Britons would tie their mythological origins into Roman stories because uh, honestly, after they were colonized by the Romans really is, is like they, they love that Roman culture and they, they, you know, they took it on and embraced it and they, they, they carried it further. There's a, um, another book that I have that I really don't have time to go into right now, but it's called, um, the Birth of Britain by Winston Churchill. If anyone knows who Winston Churchill is, they know that he's a very influential figure in um in Britain. And he wrote a book called The Birth. Of, I mean, he wrote a book called The Birth of Britain. And um, this is volume one. I actually have volume two. This is volume two. The New World. World. A history of the English speaking peoples where, um, you know, he, he they'll they'll give the game up on themselves. You know what I'm saying? That's that's real talk. They'll give the game up on themselves. Even inside of um let me find it. Even inside of his book, look look at some look at some of the stuff he says about the um the British people. Look, he begins his book. This is chapter one, page one. This is the first thing he says. In the summer of the Roman year 699, now described as the year 55 before the birth of Christ, the proconsul of Gaul, Gaius Julius Caesar, turned his gaze upon Britain. So Winston Churchill, in beginning his book, The Birth of Britain, A History of the English-Speaking People, Volume 1, first chapter, first page, first sentence, he's referencing Britain from the eyes of a Roman. And telling you in the Roman year, he talks about Julius Caesar, yada, 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 setting their eyes on Britain. He's beginning British history from contact with Rome, right? He goes on to say that, look what he says about his own people. The natives, though uncouth, had a certain value as slaves for rougher work on the land in mines and even about the house there was talk of a pearl fishery and also of gold so talking about the natives of britain from the eyes of the romans they they were uncouth but they had a certain value as slaves for rougher work now i may go into that book a little bit deeper another time but i don't want to belabor the point on this video right here so um that's like the uh, mythological origins 
of um, um, the monarchy in um, Britain, according to Geoffrey of Monmouth, the history of the kings of Britain. So apparently, um, Queen Elizabeth II, that monarchy, that throne, right? The, the idea of a throne, a monarchy for Britain that, that, that has now passed to um, Charles III, I, I believe, that Charles II, Charles III, I believe they're calling him. Um, 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 that throne de comes from a man named Aeneas, follow me, a man named Aeneas, who uh, uh, fought in the Trojan War, the war described by Homer in, um, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And then this guy has several descendants. One of them descend those descendants had a prophecy about him from soothsayers. Prophecy came true. His name was Brutus. He became the first king. And now this idea of monarchy has existed since um since then. Shout out to Homer. May your name live on forever. May your memory never die. Shout out to the uh, Trojan War. Thank all you guys for watching. Remember, I am a writer. I am an author. If you want to support me, if you want to support this channel, if you just want to support literacy, if you just want to get a good book, go to dandyandbigherm.com. Link is in the description and purchase one of my books. I have four books. Go read the synopsis. See if you'll like it. I have two urban fiction novels, one investigative reportive novel, the re most revolutionary book you will ever read in your entire life about how me and my brother took on corruption in our hometown and live to tell the tale and I have one called my beautiful and loving wife that I wrote for my wife the greatest love story ever written y'all go read those synopsis and purchase one of those books the history of the kings of Britain Joffrey and Mom Moth this your brother Matthew Daniels aka I'm Pooh, aka the chosen few aka the real bookworm I'm not just a bookworm world I'm the real bookworm make sure you get it right and as always, may your name live on forever, and may your memory, your memory, family, never die. Hotel, I'm out.